Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa usalli wa usallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. So I was reading uh, some books and the concept came up is what happens when you find out that your teacher is incorrect or he is making a mistake. And as we know, كُلُوا بِدَا عَلَى الْخَطَاءِ وَخَيْرَ الْخَطَاءِينَ التَّوَابُ That all of the sons and daughters of Adam, they are making mistakes and the best of you are those who make toba from the mistakes. So, in the last 30 years, I've had many teachers, I've benefited immensely from them. But every now and then, you find that the sheikh, he makes a mistake. And uh, depending upon the adab of the sheikh and your adab with the sheikh, uh, whether they will take the nasiha or they won't. Now, uh, I remember I was reading one time a hadith in Riyadh Salihin, and there was a particular number, and when I tried to correct one of my teachers, he got very upset that I corrected him. And I think he was upset because I corrected him in front of the people, but just as he made the mistake in front of the people, he should be corrected in front of the people. Some people, they won't go for that. They believe you have to pull them over to the side. But now the question comes is if that state mistake is a serious mistake and it's not corrected, people in their mind, they'll believe that that is. So what I found is, is that, uh, you know, it's better to re-address uh, your question by saying, Sheikh, are you certain about that? Because I think I remember reading my memory. Maybe it's not as good as yours, Sheikh, but I thought it was such and such a number. Now, they may have to go back and look again if they're humble. Now, uh, if they're not humble, we find that many of them, they become arrogant. And, uh, you know, over the last 30 years, I've had numerous uh, interactions with different people, so-called people of knowledge. I can remember a time where I pulled a particular sheikh, happened to speak Arabic, and he speaks English pretty good. I put him aside, away from the people. And I said, Sheikh, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said this, 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 what you said is incorrect. The hadith is in Bukhari. He became so infuriated that he could be corrected. He said, I am more knowledgeable than you, okay? I have more knowledge than you. How dare you correct me? Uh, so this has happened a few times over the years. Um, also, an issue is, is, uh, People not really knowing the level that you're on or what information you've come across. Now, a person, they may have, uh, you know, they've reached certain levels in terms of the the marahil or the maratib. You know, they've reached certain levels where they can research and make bahith and uh, come to their own conclusions based upon their own uh, intensive research. Um, um, I remember one brother, because he didn't think I could read or speak any Arabic at all, he actually, when I showed him the information in the Arabic language in a particular book, he actually put his thumb like this across the sentence, read everything above it and everything below it, and then looked at me like, you know, I don't see what you're saying. And I said, brother, move your thumb. And I read it to him in Arabic. Then he was like, oh, you know Arabic? You can speak some Arabic. Tkalam Arabi, Tkalam Arabi. And I'm like, ah, are you playing game? There is something called the Amana. And the opposite of that is khiana. There is uh, honoring and a person, the amana is to come forthright and to protect what is preserved for us. And the opposite of that is khiana, is treachery and deception. Um, another sheikh over the years, I remember one time I asked him a, a question about a, a particular brother. And because this brother was older and seemed to be in a higher stature than him, uh, I found a brother, he made a mistake uh, in a particular issue of uh, Aqidah and Minhaj. And this particular sheikh was very close to this brother. So, you know, he basically pushed everything aside to me. He scoffed it, but then I said to him, Ya sheikh, kef ha nafham? Kef ha nafham, ya sheikh? How do we understand the usul usul lil imam Ahmed, rahimahullah? This is maybe like 15 years ago. Wa tarqu julus ma ashab al ahwar. How do we understand Imam Ahmed's statement and the abandonment of sitting with the people of their desires? 
So the whole, the shit, his whole demeanor, his whole answer, everything switched up because I can articulate a few words in the Arabic, showing him that I'm not just, you know, some little winky dinky guy here that you can just push over to the side. Uh, also over the years, uh, there's been times where I've seen, you know, some mistakes in some of our teachers in terms of some brothers coming and ask the sheikh a question. Sheikh have no time for the brothers. But the sisters have some questions. The sheikh, he got all the way to two o'clock in the night to answer the questions of the sisters. So, you know, this is, uh, you know, something we have to, uh, we have to be aware of because, uh, you know, everybody, everything that's moving is not always grooving, man. Sometimes they make mistakes. They're humans just like us. So be careful who you take your religion from. This is just in light of knowing that I make mistakes and the sheikhs, they make mistakes too. There's nobody perfect except for the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah bless you all. This is in light of knowing what's right.